Hi, everybody. I'm Dixon. And I'm Jose. And welcome to the March 2022 episode of Southwest Side Stories. I'm really looking forward to today's episode. We're talking to a young entrepreneur named uh, Sochi Carmona, who is behind a group called Work Miha. Um, that's W E R K M I J A dot com, workmiha.com. Um, if you want to check them out, and they are a Latina owned lifestyle brand. Jose, you're going to be uh, talking to Sochi. What do you hope to learn from the interview? Um, thanks. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's a, a entrepreneurial small business. You know, we've been promoting those. Uh, you know, we've talked to uh, the standard brick and mortar kind of restaurant businesses and, you know, a small business in the community that started as a kiosk, you know, in the north side. Uh, I kind of wanted to take a look at like this uh, social media kind of blend of, uh, of, of merchandise selling. And this, you know, particular business, uh, Work Me, uh, promotes like Latina empowerment. So it also re- promotes uh, like representation in um, uh, in high professional uh, areas, but also in uh, uh, for entrepreneurs themselves. So it's an entrepreneur endeavor that uh, kind of helps uh, uh, galvanize uh, more representation you know, for Latina small business owners. So I thought it'd be, I want to learn more about that signal. Yeah, it sounds really interesting. And I'm definitely curious to learn more. Um, you know, there is the sort of model of small business on the Southwest side or really anywhere um, in the city or beyond where, you know, you open up a, a storefront, uh, a brick and mortar storefront, you know, you may rent from a landlord, you may eventually own your own building, et cetera. But you know, in in a social media world, you don't necessarily need that. So I'm interested in hearing what a lot of these young entrepreneurs are doing um, to sell online and maybe potentially move beyond some of those expenses and some of that need for a lot of upfront money that stops people from opening small businesses. So definitely curious to hear about that angle as well. Yeah, hope to learn a little bit about the hustle. Thank you so much for having me on. Yes, so Work Mija is a Latina lifestyle brand, which I started September 2020 in uh, Chicago based. I am from Chicago, specifically the Little Village neighborhood on the South Side. I'm at the North Side right now, but I will not claim being a North Sider. I'm forever South Sider, looking to move back eventually. Um, but I started the brand, and um, we are definitely growing. And- And, you know, just finding all the Latinas to help cater the representation to, as well as host some very inspiring Latinas on the Work Mija podcast. Um, Check it out. But you can just shop apparel, accessories, Latina empowerment, definitely um, a brand, you know, to inspire Latinas to reach their highest potential, which is just something I was always raised (laughs) to do, uh, given, you know, all the primas that I have, and it just felt like it's something that suited me. Can you tell us a little bit more, you know, uh, about like, how does it work? You know, what can people expect if they go to the shop? And then what can they expect in the podcast when they tune in? Yeah, so definitely. So I started the social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram, uh, TikTok. I don't tweet too much because I might get in trouble if I tweet <laughs> all the thoughts. But you can find us at, at Work Mija. And I started off with a little coffee mug. It is our Chingona Fuel mug. And, you know, since then have expanded to shirts and sweatshirts. Uh, just in general, you know, part of our cultura, whether it's a no pares Mija t-shirt, a bet on yourself Mija sweatshirt, or what I'm wearing today, something a little more fun and whimsical, which is our cheese and chill sweatshirts, because that's the foundation of the best relationships, whether it's with your bestie or with your life partner as well, which is what I feel truly. And so, you know, on Instagram, I create a lot of content. Um 
to empower, to inspire, but I also like to make people laugh. <laughs> it drives traffic to the websites. Um, it drives traffic to the social media streams. Um, definitely growing on TikTok because of that. And just trying to find a way to break through a sea of majority, very white type of content. Content where I felt like maybe I didn't see myself and many other women, many other Latinos represented. So I just wanted to bring a little bit of my culture to those social media platforms and you know a way to kind of just hear more stories and just more motivation in a way to provide mentors to a lot of whether it's Latinas potential business owners um, corporate Latinas uh, I started with sharing posts on the Instagram um, and just kind of sharing women's stories, women who I knew. And then from there, the podcast kind of grew as I started to meet more Latina business owners in different industries, whether, you know, they're making candles, whether they're selling jewelry, um, you know, just so many different industries, uh, tech, and just kind of sharing their stories, sharing their uh, background, which is something that's very relatable to my audience because, you know, we hear a lot of these success stories, especially from other entrepreneurs, which are great, very inspiring, but a lot of them always end up with, oh yeah, and then my parents gave me $10,000, $20,000. Yeah, it's just like, um, cool, I can't relate. So <laughs> I want to find <laughs> the entrepreneurs who I can relate with. It's like, cool, great. How do we start with no money? Do we do, you know, our personal savings? Are we, you know, crowdfunding? How do we do it from a space that isn't as privileged? So there's a couple of mm -hmm. things you can find on my social media platforms. It's almost like you're motivating the motivators. <laughs> <laughs> motivated you know what where did that kind of come from um I think it's maybe from seeing a lot of people who come from where I come from not really having that in a way not really having the encouragement to maybe do something so risky a lot of the times you know especially in the Latino households Latino mindset it's very much been growing up with uh it's survival you know you find the job to pay the bills you find the job that's going to bring you security and sometimes when you want to do something that's kind of a risk that's not going to make you money in the beginning that's really you know going to be a lot um it's hard to find the people who will inspire who will motivate you and tell you bet on yourself you know i believe in you uh, we don't get that a lot. It's more so like, well, why don't you take the job that will provide you with security for you and your family? So I guess I'm kind of the person being like, you know what? Prioritize your happiness. That's something you can do. A lot of the times that's a privilege. That's something that we don't realize. I feel like given our generational, you know, upbringing, our parents' generational upbringing that we can do. A lot of the times it's fine. You came to this country to find a job to provide to your family and it keeps going and going and going, level up, level up. But when there's like a halt, like, hey, by the way, I'm going to try something. I, I don't know if it's going to work out, you know, sometimes, especially maybe your parents might be like, oh, well, why don't you get a 401k? Why don't you get the job that's going to allow you for saving? So, and if that's something for me, I do have parents, you know, luckily who I, once again, it's a privilege. They spoke English. They were born in Chicago. Um, they went to college. Like I've already coming from that privilege in a way. So at least for them, I was doing this with a full-time job to kind of have that security for me. But even, you know, having been laid off from my job and now doing this full-time, you know, I think for me explaining to them, it's like, hey, I have these skills um, and I'm going to put them to use for me and make money for me. So having them understand that I think was great. And seeing what I've been able to create so far with it, you know, kind of helped. But I know there's a lot of people who don't have that. Um, 
And whether they have someone to believe in them, what it comes down to is, do you believe in yourself, which is a harder thing and a journey of its own. So I know Mm -hmm. some of the quotes that I post or some of the things, like if you look at my social media, a lot of that was actually, you know, inspired probably after a lot of therapy sessions. (laughs) So you can almost see the growth um, and just kind of like my own journey from that. Um, But I was like, if I'm feeling like this, I feel like somebody else is too. Um, And I want to tell them like, hey, it's okay to feel like this and it's okay to do the things you want to do. Can you tell me a little bit about that experience? Just because people might not know how much work, you know, it takes to keep all of those pages up to date with merchandise, with events, and then to make those events happen, you know, across the city. (laughs) It is work for sure. I mean, as a small business, especially when you're just starting off, a lot of times it might just be you. Um, I mean, you're competing with brands that have departments who have event coordinators, who have marketing coordinators, who have the so and within the marketing department have their social media department have their email marketing department they have their product development department then you have your sales department you have your shipping so <laughs> doing that yourself it definitely takes a lot of time it definitely takes a lot of work something that's very hard if you are also trying to balance that with the full time job trying to find the time for it um and then to go out and physically do pop ups for me when i started um it was definitely during covid and in general i always figured i was just going to do websites to start off with sales because i knew that social media was an easy way to you know garner traction to build brand awareness so I think the fact that we have social media now almost makes it like, why not? You know, you have the tools. I don't have graphic design, but I know there's a program like Canva that's free that can help me design these flyers for these pop-ups. And I've been using or utilizing social media to promote my other, you know, projects, whether it's my YouTube beauty influencer. So, and I'm coming from a marketing background. So at least I knew I had that niche, but it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of patience because not every post is going to be like, oh my gosh, 1 million followers and you have a hundred thousand sales. No, definitely not. But it's finding the right platforms that work for you. And for the longest, you know, I was utilizing Facebook and Instagram, which were great for my different audiences. Um, But the Instagram platform makes it very difficult for business owners, because they want you to pay to play, they want you to pay for the ads. So I found something that works for me, and something I've been recommending to a lot of other small businesses, which is TikTok. TikTok, you know, generating sales on there has really changed how I am doing business, how I am, you know, catering and promoting my social media. I'm focusing on that platform, which I definitely encourage to a lot of small businesses, whether you're product-based or a service-based business, physical business, like the brand awareness and the sales that you'll gain from there definitely makes a huge difference. Um, Also about getting the word out about your business. So it's just finding what works for you and being consistent with it. Because once I started being consistent with it, I started to see the benefits and the payoff. Um, But even then, I still find that it is important to do in-person pop-ups or I really enjoy it for, you know, my crowd who maybe necessarily doesn't hang out on social media or just in general for the local, you know, Chicago, Chicago suburbs customers that I meet and find at these pop-ups. And I specifically enjoy doing them in neighborhoods like Pilsen. In McKinley Park, you know, I started doing a lot more at a local um, place in McKinley Park called Mariposa Chicago. So I think just this past year, they opened up, you know, their event space, they do workshops, they do pop ups in McKinley Park across the street from the I think 35th Orange Line, um, which is great just to see a space like that. It's like, hey, can you imagine like your next like um, baby showers, bridal showers, stuff like that. From this, for people in the south side who you normally have to travel all the way to the north side. So to kind of just have that event space or just to, you know, go to pop ups in Pilsen and seeing, especially because of COVID, a lot of businesses collaborating, opening up their doors to vendors like me who maybe don't have a physical space but want to kind of meet people. Um, walking traffic, I think it's been great. It's definitely, <laughs> depending how big or small, you know, you got to prep, you got to set up. 
Um, so it's a big undertaking, but if it's something, you know, you really enjoy, it's something that I definitely recommend. And I absolutely feel like it'll pay off for your business. There's this big notion that, you know, people from my generation and then the younger generation, your generation, uh, you know, that, that we're not, that we don't want to work and that no one out there wants to work. Clearly you like, you know, you, you put in the work, <laughs> you know, uh, it, but I mean, how, how, how viable, um, have you found it to be like, Hey, this is something that I think, you know, you know, if I dedicate these next five years, this is all that I could do for like, you know, my, for the rest of my career. Or is that, you also, you know, you mentioned you're also do, you know, beautician influencing on social media. Is it just that you don't want to just do any one thing? This is just one thing. On the repertoire, is this something that you think, you know, keeps growing? Um, I think I just realized my talents and my skill set and my problems with authority. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> but it's like, hey, if I'm going to do yeah. this for somebody else, might as well do it for myself. Um, but, you know, I thought about it. I never knew what I wanted to do when I was little. And I just realized I did at some in some way. Um, but I didn't really know. I knew I wanted to own a business. I just wasn't sure what type of business. And I think that's what really kept me because when you want to start a business, I think it's important that it really is something you truly love because you're going to have hard days. You're going to have no sale days and loving it. It's what's going to push you through. But also a part of what took me so long to realize what I wanted to do is that what I wanted to do did not exist in the 90s. Social media did not exist in the 90s. Content creation, like what we're doing now, did not exist. The closest I ever got to is like, oh, maybe ads. And then essentially marketing. Uh, but that even took me a while to figure out. And I remember uh, at my last job, uh, one of the interview questions with the owner of the company you know, we we're looking at different positions and she asked me, which I was kind of like, well, I did not expect that question. She was like, um, what was the first time you ever sold something? And I was thinking about it and I was like, I was like eight or nine years old. My mom used to have yard sales with us. And it was very much like, all right, get the word out. You know, we would do it Sundays because we were the sinners of the neighborhood and wouldn't go to church. And we knew <laughs> traffic, <laughs> you know, the crowd would come around noon and we would create our posters and our signs and go market down the streets yelling yard sale, yard sale, um, sometimes inviting our cousins. And my mom was like, OK, gather up your things, set the prices and go sell it. Go make some money. Um, little did I know that probably helped pay the bills, but I was just, you know, having a good time selling and figuring out who to sell to. And, you know, sometimes, you know, you learned the hard way from some senoras trying to take advantage of little kids. And she's like, yeah, sure. For these three items, you know, 15, I was like, excuse me, ma'am. That's like five items. Uh, here's the price. Here's my price, you know? And so I was like, yeah, I've been selling since I was like eight or nine years old. So <laughs> I think this is definitely a skill I've developed, you know, having gone to La Garra to Maxwell Street Markets, I learned don't get too excited about items or they're going to price things higher for you. So even as a kid, I was like, okay, don't get excited about that vintage sewing machine. Yeah. See, they get you. <laughs> but I just realized I had, I realized what my skills were. I realize what I'm good at and I realize what I enjoy. You know, I'm 30 years old. I've had different jobs. I've done human resources. I don't care for it. It's not for my personality. <laughs> I found that I really like marketing, but I have to be very specific on what I market. You know, I would apply to jobs. It was like for like car marketing things. And they're like, so why do you want this job? I was like, because I want money. I don't know. You know, I have to really enjoy what I do. So I think I've found a mixture of what I can do. And I think you also were always one of the ones who would, you know, call me Miss Businesswoman or like what new scheme or scam are you coming up with? <laughs> But I was always pretty good about, you know, if I needed money, here's a way to do it. And here's your marketing plan to figure it out. So I finally figured out something that I enjoy for myself. And for me, this is phase one, I feel like, of what I'm doing and expanding to. It's such a subtle uh, encouragement that creeps into everyday language 
which is what you need for a real cultural shift, you know? And, and I think that you are influencing more of this, you know, cultural shift to have to really uh, let young girls know you can, you don't need anything, anyone in your life to, to have a happy life. You know, you have all the tools in your hands and your mind and, and your heart. And, you know, on that note, like, uh, you know, phase one sounds very exciting. And, and like, uh, and where, where, where you, do you think like phase two, you know, will take you? Um, already working on phase two. So with having been in a social media based, what would you call it? Industry in general. Um, having worked for a brand, a larger brand in the social media world, influencer world, uh, we're already kind of working on phase two as we are building the work Miha platforms. You know, now it's showing other business owners, specifically, I want to cater to Latino, Latina business owners, how to utilize these platforms, how to grow their brand. You know, what took me six, seven weeks to kind of putting the work consistency on TikTok with 300 followers. And, you know, as soon as I got laid off from my last job, I was like, what do I do? I was like, well, let's make content. Let's be consistent, which is something we could never do. And we grew from 3,000 to 12,000, you know, new followers, growing that brand, growing the eyes on the brand within like six weeks. And now, you know, we're just continuously growing. So I want to show other people how to do that with the work Miha marketing services, social media services. So that's definitely on the horizon for phase two. And I can't quite talk about phase three yet, but we're on to phase two. <laughs> We've got a lot of phases. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that sounds like a big exciting year. You know, um, I'm looking forward, you know, to seeing uh, your platform grow and to the amazing interviews you'll be doing. Um, definitely a shout out here. Um, anything else that you want to add before we sign off? Shop Work Miha. <laughs> Workmiha.com. Definitely just check us out. Share with a friend. Share, you know, with a partner who you want to buy products. We have our Cheese Mint Chill collection right now. Perfect for Valentine's Day, Valentine's Day, all year round. Um, but in general, just enjoy, just follow. I hope people are inspired. I hope they're motivated. It, for me, I think what really pushes me through is getting those messages that like, hey, your podcast made a difference for me or, you know, this post really spoke to me. So definitely let me know because that's what helps me through those days that are definitely harder ones. So I appreciate everybody's words of kindness. All right. I thought that was a really good conversation. Thanks for uh, doing that interview, Jose. Um, one thing that I was really interested to learn was that Work Miha does these pop-up events as well um, with the entrepreneurs that they work with. And it reminds me of some of the events that I've seen around the Southwest side in the last few years. There was um, an event that the collective did around holiday time last year uh, a merry market, and we invited a bunch of entrepreneurs to participate. And it was a lot of people who typically sell online, but had the opportunity to bring in, um, you know, what they were selling to Zoe's patio in Garfield Ridge. And so people could come in and take a look and, you know, handle it and, you know, see it in person and all that stuff that you get out of a brick and mortar store that you don't necessarily get online. So it's nice to have that in person. Uh, interactivity as well so uh what what did you think jose yeah i mean like um i think that as we've been trying to highlight you know um chicago's got a lot of uh niche uh you know communities that um have very uh deep you know cultural roots uh back to uh to to you know different um ancestries you know and it kind of lends to the entrepreneurial spirit of Chicago, I, I you know it's one of the reasons why I think that our food is so authentic and amazing around the world. Um, and I think that uh, you know, like this uh, online kind of pop up model, um, it's a lot more sustainable way to bring about uh, you know different people's efforts, but a lot of uh, different uh, aspects of Chicago's character. That um, you know, like uh, we saw a food truck craze at one point in Chicago, which, you know, was the idea of, you know, move away from the brick and mortar limitations, but it had its own limitations as to like, you know, can you sell as much 
on a given day and how long will that product last? Things like Work Mika, which are, you know, like kind of small, but um, uh, as a branding exercise um, and also self-empowerment kind of like model spreading, you know, online and offline, you know, like the pop-up uh, model makes it uh, a much more sustainable side hustle, I think. And, um, you know, there was a pop-up this week uh, that I, I got to go to and it was nice to see the other you know, um, you know, entrepreneurs and their wares uh, kind of intermingle and talk about the other events that they, they put on. So um, hopefully, you know, an ongoing thing that we'll be seeing, you know, across Chicago's festivals. Yeah, definitely looking forward to that. And, you know, as these events come up, we'll be sure to let people know about them. And again, people can check workmeha.com and all the workmeha social media profiles to, uh, to learn more about what's coming up. But when people get together, you know, in person when possible, you know, there's that additional sense of community as well. So that's that's really nice to see. Um, and speaking of getting together um, in person, I did want to mention um, before we wrap up the episode that the collective is starting our monthly community bike rides again. Um, this is our March episode, um, and we do these bike rides from March through November. So the first ride will be at uh, Senka Park. Um, it's going to uh, start at 10 a.m. on Saturday, March 5th. And we will be doing it the first Saturday of every month at 10 o'clock at a different park uh, throughout the Southwest side. Um, so stay tuned for more details, but the first ride is gonna be March 5th, um, kicking off from uh, Senka Park. And all the routes that we do are family friendly, which means that we only take the side streets and if we cross a major street like 55th or Pulaski or Kedzie, uh, we're going to do it at a traffic light or a stop sign. So if people are not used to riding in the street, are not super comfortable with that, you know, we've planned routes that take that into account. We're going to be riding in a group. We're not going to be riding super fast. It's not a race. Uh, it's about a 15 to 20 minute ride. So you know, we think it's accessible for a pretty broad range of people, but we'd love to see everyone come out on uh, March 5th and then again throughout the spring and summer.